and I really liked what he was doing and he was working with clients and um, he was uh, he was pretty inspirational as an any type three so he's really driven he's Leo as well so he's, he's really he's got a lot of drive and um, I still love him to bits now he's done uh, he's done extraordinarily well if it's not if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be where I am now there's lots of other people who helped me and um, I could reel off the, the list of people but he helped me to uh, become the coach that I am today the NLP coach and I then qualified in uh, clinical hypnotherapy with him as well and then also um, EFT uh, and I did a little training with him and I furthered my training with Carl Dawson as an EFT master who also, also does matrix screen printing and then I studied lots of other people so basically I got all these tools to be able to help people with fear I used it to work on my own stuff as much as I began to listen more to my gut rather than my head, which was full of all this nonsense that was telling me the world needs to be like this. And I could, I mean, to begin with, I used to say, uh, well, I'm training in all this to become this guy who's going to be this coach, but that's not a proper job. I couldn't do that. That's a cop out. So there was still a lot of programming that was saying that you know this work that I do now was was wrong but my heart was going oh I would love to be a coach that would be the greatest job on earth I'd help people transform their lives transform their limiting beliefs have all these amazing tools that you could use on yourself and on others and my gut was saying calling me saying this is the thing that you need to do Daniel this is the thing and even though I was resisting it each and every step of the way, I was still taking bite-sized chunks in action. And as a result, now where I am, in, uh, I've, uh, I've come like full circle where I've got all of this um, knowledge now from my own experience. And I, I know that you, I mean, this is why I'm, I've chosen Mia to be the guest host, because Mia, Mia's like um, a twin, really, on the other side of the, the Atlantic, because she's done in this America in America because she's done this as well because I think you become your advert for your clients everything that, that yeah. comes out of you I've seen your videos and uh, I've, I've seen a lot of your interviews and there's a lot of authenticity with you Thank and you. and you just happened to just see saw sort of one of my videos it was obviously there was an energy about me there was something I want, there's a lot of people who do this kind of work and they get into it they think this is a great way to making money uh, they think um, they like the idea of the you know the ego status of you know being able to help all these people, but um, I got into it because I wanted to help myself, and after that, and I know that was true for you, but after that, then it becomes when you have helped yourself and you really know that it works, you really know, um, you then really want to help others because what as is available in. Um, standard psychological practice is not usually spiritually based and I know that there is a spiritual great spiritual element to your work um, and, and in that I'm talking about that there's something greater than our mind there's something more there's something about purpose there's something about heart that it's not all just you have a mental problem so we're going to solve it at the mental level you can solve things at heart level, you can solve things at gut level, and you can solve things at a, at a level that it just encompasses spirituality that means that there's something that's, that's going on that's greater than ourselves, and that there's something that is very purposeful. Even in the pain, there has been great gifts, opportunities, and teachings. There's, there's something that if you hadn't have been through that, you wouldn't have had the level of consciousness that you, you've had now. We, we don't grow through having a silver spoon in our mouth and things being really good. We learn through the trials and we learn through the great suffering. Um, and any, any great um, individual um, who has ever lived, who has brought uh, love and uh, a change of consciousness back into society, has been through great suffering usually. And they have come out the other side, and they have those gifts. And um, I know that uh, I know that I was meant to go through that. At the time, I, I would have said, "I don't want ever to, you know, go through this." But what I say to my clients is, um, "Keep be, keep being with the unbeing, and keep processing it." It, it is sometimes a, a big, long, dark tunnel, and we feel that we can't get out of it, but. We have to become the light. Light is within us, and the, the, the heaviness and the darkness is, is our thoughts, and it is the, the trauma and the conditioning and all the, 
stuff that, that clings to us that blinds us sometimes from our own light and blinds us from the light guiding us forward. But you just need to be able to take the next step. You don't have to figure it all out. Uh, I, would you agree with that? I totally agree with it. I think you're absolutely right on. And we do teach what we have learned in our own life. I love that you um, said that you would still do your path again because that's something that I say too. I'm grateful for my abuse of childhood and the things that I went through and even being in a wheelchair and all that to, to being, you know, walking, you know, fast an hour a day or whatever it is or, you know, being able to do dance classes and enjoy life. It's all about being grateful for what's presented to us and what gifts we can take from that to share with the world. So share with us some of the gifts because it's incredible your life. So share with us your gifts. I mean, you're an NLP coach. You've studied Enneagram, which is really amazing um, when you can help people formulate who they are and understand on different paths. Share with us some of the stuff you do. Well, the, the Enneagram is something that, I was actually told this, as the psychic told me a long time ago, that you'd, you'd be working spiritually, but just in a different way. And when I found the Enneagram, I did have a great light bulb moment that went off. And I just intently studied that ever since. There was only a little bit. It's actually not part of NLP, but it was on the NLP course in Harley Street when I, in London when I was training. And um, I've just immersed myself in it and really understood it. And um, the, the simple way of looking at the Enneagram is that it's all about the ego and that there are nine ego types of which we all have. And when you discover your own type, you can then become more conscious of if you're doing what I call a wanting to get to be because any wanting to get to be is always suffering and the liberation from suffering is to stop wanting it's what the buddha said um the, the, these are the teachings of christ krishna uh, any deity that has ever um, transformed their own um, ego to to descend to, to a, a level of consciousness that is in a pure sense of being where there, there is no wanting anymore there's no fear because they've evolved beyond the fear each one of the wantings is, is rooted in fear and they're like, um, the Enneagram is like um, discovering your, uh, your personal um, negative hypnosis that uh, has, has been running since childhood. Because I've noticed this from uh, children at age three years old who haven't had great dysfunctional upbringings. Mm -hmm. um, but you can already see the personality evolving. They're either a love and approval type, a security type, or a control type. Um, and it's something that I'm continuing to write about and explore. Um, I tend to work with almost every client um, this uh, using this. And if I look, look upon myself, it would be um, the, great, the great suffering was that the world would not support me. And as an Enneotype 6, there's, the Enneotype 6s have great um, fears, uh, or at least to begin with, that um, before you work on yourself that um, that the world is out to get you it's out to harm you so you need to be on a fight flight or freeze all the time but what if that wasn't real what if that was a great big dirty lie that was in your mind that you could let go and so all spirituality the the act of that is surrender and it's a surrender to trusting in life in, um, in all that is, the universe, source, God, love, whatever you want to use. But that great surrender allows us to descend and drop in the moment. And that is home. So I learned that I could actually be at home on planet Earth. And then you're able to live more presently. Uh, ultimately, that is the, um, that is the great, that is the greatest lesson that I've that I've had, the, the pain actually got me more into the now. If I'd never experienced any of that and I'd been this athlete and gold medalist and world record holder and all the rest of it, I'd still probably be doing a wanting to get to be. Whereas now I surrender to all of the bad stuff and I take responsibility for it. And I use that to evolve even further. Daniel, thank you so much for allowing me to interview you. This was a pleasure, I loved it. I just. I love you. I love your story. I'm, 
as you said, we're we're a soul family, so it's just absolutely perfect. Thank you, thank Mia. you. Thank you. That's, I, I feel exactly the same. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you.